been elaborated and updated to the normal line for the growth in consumption, all this number can be, the situation can be much worse than the one we are describing now. And to the point that if you go today in the traditional Mendeleev table of published by the American Chemical Society, I will always mention that at my time when I was a student, everything was black and white. Today, no more black and white. It's uh, black, white, and blue, yellow, red, etc. because in each color is telling you for how long this mineral will still be available if we don't take care of the problem. And most of them are just minerals that are just very important for our industrial development. Membrane system can do much more than just the separation of fresh water from salt. Membrane system, not the traditional one, the one not yet the dominant technology, either versus modes or nano filtration similar, can produce, can offer solution to this kind of problem. The most interesting operation what is what we call membrane distillation and related problems. Membrane distillation is a process in which basically transmembrane flux is totally, is basically independent from the concentration of the feed. Just the opposite that you have in reverse osmosis. When you concentrate the feed, flux are going down to the point that you approach at zero at one point. When the concentration is too high, if you don't change the pressure, flux is going to zero. It does not happen in membrane distillation and that you can easily understand if you go through what is membrane distillation, and which means that in membrane distillation, we not only can separate salt from water, but we can concentrate and concentrate the brine to the point that we can induce a super saturated solution on the brine side. That means we can induce heterogeneous nucleation, which is from the wrong step for crystallization. You know, crystallization is an old uh, oh, no, chemical uh, operation. The most interesting for separation of the minerals, for the purification of minerals, for the concentration of minerals. So ideal for making, uh, giving, trying to give a contribution to the problem I was mentioning before. And that's what uh, we are doing today. Quickly, I'm going through this, but you can find in the literature most part of the data is published. The point is here that the driving force in, sorry, in, uh, in, uh, crystal, in crystallization is just uh, the difference in the vapor pressure across the membrane. And as I was mentioning before, it's nothing more than membrane distillation in which you have a traditional loop of a membrane distillation step where you can concentrate and concentrate as much as possible the brine, but if you want to arrive to crystallization, that means if you want to produce crystal, you must be also able to separate continuously the crystal from the loop in such a way you don't climb, you don't make huge, uh, really too much mass, mass resistance in the system, so you have to remove this. So the only variation and the only part that you have to study carefully is this one, how to remove to induce crystalli heterogeneous crystallization in the membrane module, but the growth of the crystal has to take place in different parts of the system in such a way to minimize. Seems to be difficult, it is not. Today, a lot of people are working with this system around the world, and if you know what they are doing, you will see that can be done. Crystals, in some cases, help you to control fouling. When crystal, crystal, not gel, they, they are just inducing uh, you know, they promote the turbulence locally, and that is a, is a way to minimize concentration <laughs> propagation eventually with no big problem. But anyway, this kind of system can be done, and so you can realize this membrane distillation with the appropriate configuration in such a way that the crystal are removed. So you can crystallize basically in organic molecules, organic and enzyme protein by, you know, the, the big uh, protein. And uh, that is one of the kind of work that was mentioned we are doing. There is a lot of problems to be solved. I just quickly show you some of them. Basically, you can realize this in different ways. You can create the vapor pressure gradient by changing the temperature, traditional membrane distillation, or by concentration different, what we call osmotic membrane distillation. But, and you can combine the two eventually. 
Both of them can help you to create a supersaturated solution, and the supersaturated solution will induce nucleation and crystal growth. What is important here is not only you have crystallization, but this is a way, in principle already, where you can crystallize in a much easier and interesting way than normal crystallization. If you go in the literature, in the paper, in the publish, you will find the description of the fact that the principal membrane is a place in which if you have an ideal membrane, we are using always all fiber, and all fiber has this one, you see each pore that you have in the system, assuming they are all equal and parallel, is a place where you can induce crystallization. So you have basically a very homogeneous distribution of the metastable phase where the heterogeneous nucleation is supposed to take place. Uh, very different from the situation that you can have in real, in real life, in traditional system. You have to take care also here of concentration polarization phenomena, but more than this, in, in temperature polarization phenomena, which are the real problem, because also in this case, you can have temperature at the interface and concentration at the interface that can affect the system. Now, concentration is negligible, does not affect the driving force very much, but affects the viscosity, so you have to take care of the increasing viscosity. Temperature polarization can be very, very significant. Very, very significant, you have to take care of two kinds of two problems. One is the concentration, temperature concentration, uh, temperature profile that you create on your membrane, but also on what happened in the material that you are using. Until now, when you're talking about uh, reverse osmosis, nobody's asking you thermal conductivity of your membranes. It's a parameter not present in uh, any study that you have on the reverse osmosis membrane. In here, you have to look about the thermal conductivity. Today, we are losing about 50% of the energy you supply to the system, not in warming up the solution and creating vapor, but in warming up the polymer. And if he has a high thermal conductivity, you are losing a lot of energy just warming up the polymer that we don't need, so this is lost. So we have to look materials with appropriate material, appropriate thermal conductivity, appropriate porosity, appropriate morphology of the, of the pore distribution, etc., to keep control of temperature <coughs> polarization phenomena, which are a little bit more complicated than just concentration polarization. But any good uh, PhD student in chemical engineering will give you just the answer and will be able to solve the problem. If you do this, you can introduce, using this uh, heterogeneous nucleation, some of the best crystals today produced on Earth. This is a piece of some protein that uh, if you go and you find the literature, the result, these are better than the crystal we are producing in the space lab in a microgravity environment. So excellent situation to the point that this has been published in the normal. Assuming that what we are able to create, when you have a membrane and you have a nice uh, surface morphology, what is happening here, that you have some cavity on the surface. Now having this cavity, when you make uh, the solution going through, you can concentrate the protein at level in this cavity, impossible to be reached in the free solution, no way. So people were not able to build this. In membranes you can do it. You can do it this kind of, uh, using this kind of uh, uh, special case and uh, related also to the value of the hydrophobic character of your membrane and <coughs> that can, be, can affect a lot uh, your uh, the system can affect a lot also in terms of the traditional uh, nucleation rate. You can use traditional equation in producing uh, the appropriate uh, parameter related to the porosity, morphology of the membrane, etc. And at the end, uh, you can have interesting this plot where you plot delta G heterogeneous compared to the one homogeneous as a function of the contact angle. You have this behavior that we will not have time but later on is to take the theoretical analysis you will see that these data are perfectly uh, coincident with theoretical one that uh, you can extrapolate. And including, including the level of uh, porosity of the different membrane that can also affect uh, this kind of value. Which means that you are uh, have an influence if you change the activation energy, basically. You are changing the kinetic the growth of your crystals. All the data here are telling you that uh, you know, these are all protein, basically, or, uh, or uh, amino acid. And when you see here, I don't know, 12 hour or one week, etc., means that in literature, 
the expectation was two months, and you can crystallize in two weeks. The expectation was uh, one week, and you crystallize in two hours. So if you check all these uh, nice figures, and this is kind of the motivation for showing you this result. That you want, this is tripsin, this is lidocaine. Now, this was initially done for uh, uh, organic biomolecules, a lot of interest in pharmaceutical application, big molecules, etc. But today we have different interests. All these data telling you that the, the quality of this crystal is excellent. And you see here the variance here, that means that all these uh, crystals are equal. If you just make with traditional crystallization, you spread the frequency of the ratio between the size of the molecules in a large spectrum, and when you do with membrane variants, basically they are mono dispersed practically. This is if you go to the synchrotron and you check the quality of this crystal, as I was mentioned, is an excellent refracting power crystal from the membrane system, much more than what you can have in other cases. Uh, don't worry about the problem of farming. This you can find data in literature showing you can work for months producing the water as a permanent and crystal as a concentrate. Six months, eight months has been is our term of operation basically. So quite interesting. You can control the kinetics, etc. etc. I would like to show you in the few minutes that I still have uh, available uh, two more important parts of the story. First of all, you not only produce crystal, but you can handle the system producing specific polymer of the material you're looking for. This is an amino acid, uh, glycine, and glycine can exist in the form alpha, beta, gamma, different polymer. Today, if you go in little, you can find the, 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 the data. We are able to produce with membrane-assisted uh, crystallizers, not the glycine, but the specific alpha, beta, or gamma form, just working on the parameters controlling the system basically on cross-flow velocity and transmembrane pressure and temperature. Doing this, you can find data if you can produce just gamma or just alpha, the two most interesting ones. And that's the same, these are things, uh, paracetamol. Yeah, paracetamol, you see, two different forms, just changing the classic parameters of the system and looking to the property of the concentrate. Forget about the water. Nobody looking to the water that you do in this kind of case. And that can be done in many different, different ways. You can produce specific uh, kind of, uh, and we are trying to give an explanation about this, and there's a lot of interesting explanation in progress, not easy, it's a, it's a little bit naive, but basically we are extracting and removing from the system some of the intermediate kinetic uh, uh, form that can, you can crystallize and normally they disappear, but if you extract from the system, avoiding to growing crystal, you never arrive to the thermodynamic form and you can produce some of the intermediate form, the one that we, you can be eventually interested. And again here, sorry, again here you see that this is for a few hours, but basically the transmembrane flux is no, no evidence of flux decay. If you do the same in reverse osmosis, at this time we are basically out. Just to uh, tell you that now this system is no more working on organic. This system is working today on desalination. The big problem which we assume that you can extract minerals from the brine that I was describing before. <coughs> Keep in mind that the brine of the IRO plant existing today is running around the world. You can, ex if you just extract magnesium from the existing brine today, you can increase production of magnesium 100%. You can double the industrial production of magnesium. With lithium, that somebody was mentioned today, just extracting lithium from the brine of the existing arrow plants, Ashelon, Thor, etc., you can increase 30% lithium production, etc., etc., for any kind of mineral, something can, can be done. However, it's not so easy. Just to show you, and I will stop the last one case in just talking about this is the case I was mentioning before. In total, the conclusion of Medina, you can just uh, Purify, we can work with a recovery factor of about 92%, basically, but we can produce the fresh water and minerals. And that can be the nice way to reduce the cost of water production. Minerals is value. Water costs zero, and people don't like to pay for water. And nobody will complain if you sell him 
lithium, magnesium, boron, uranium, etc., etc. Uh, just to show you that a lot of work is in progress today, first to solve problem. Look at this case here. If you want to extract lithium from the sea, try, and you do not have any success. You see here, lithium at 50 degrees centigrade will have a supersaturated solution that we can <coughs> crystallize at 14 molar solution. You will never be able, using traditional direct contact membrane distillation, the most normal one, to arrive this concentration. You go to zero flux at 10 molar, 9 molar, so no crystallization. But if you have a smart PhD student and you start working with me trying to understand what is going on and to check what is inducing this phenomenon, you will understand there's a typical example of wetting that is not appropriate the configuration you can use it. If you change configuration, no more diacontal membrane distillation, and if you go to vacuum membrane distillation, and you can understand why if you're an expert in membrane distillation, you can see that you can approach easily the 14 molar and still you have transmembrane back. So you can produce crystals of lithium chloride, by the way, today they extract normally carbonate, lithium carbonate. In the future, <coughs> lithium chloride becoming more interesting in terms of something than, than, than uh, lithium carbonate in cool cell application. You can see here you can have a nice crystal of lithium carbonate, and in some, uh, some temperature you can have two polymer, in some temperature you have only one. In increasing temperature you only produce one form, and decreasing two form. But you have to use a vacuum membrane distillation, not direct membrane distillation, as I was showing before. So, not easy. You have to need a lot of specific experience in this operation that people don't know. They don't know the operation, but they don't know also the membrane. These membranes are hydrophobic, not hydrophilic. Everybody producing water today is using hydrophilic membranes. If you have a polymer hydrophobic, they tell your professor will tell you make hydrophilic. Find a way to change the property making hydrophilic. Don't do it. Try to emphasize the hydrophobic character and make hydrophobic porous membrane, and you can operate in this kind of system. And that's why we are working with ceramic membrane. We are working with Professor Sean and colleagues in Taiwan with some other kind of membrane, but we have to make everything hydrophobic, not hydrophilic, which is not easy. But if you do it, this is just with the membrane from, from, uh, from Professor Sean, nice lithium chloride, very clean in the appropriate mono form, not the mixture of different polymer, a specific one, quite interesting for industrial possible application, etc. etc. This one just telling you that if you do this, you'll change the way you, you write your table. The way to save money, forget about energy consumption, forget about the depression recovery, etc. Because if you do write total annual profit for the salt, forget about the water, you are producing money, just producing minerals. So don't complain about brine disposal. Don't, com don't send back 50% in the ocean, but just optimize in terms of the production of the concentrate upstream your membrane. And on the side, you make a present to the people and give water for drinking and for agriculture. But the real final benefit is this water, this number here. And in principle, this is a big number. This number will change 100 times because we are professors, so there is a lot of other parameters that we have to count. But this is the logic. If you want to change significantly, not small improvement, such as the final cost of water production, the best way of doing it, don't try to improve RO, etc., because a lot of work has already been done. Can be done, but will be marginal. Change completely your mind. You can still produce fresh water, but you can decrease the price having no brine disposal problem, but having something to sell. And that can be today more and more real value, and shortly you will read also newspaper telling problem of not water stress, but the mineral stress. And something happening already with China about the you know, large herbs, etc. We're fighting it already when Mr. Trump told the people, I don't give you, no, I'm feeding Better, they say, I don't sell you anymore the mineral, the, the, the dark herbs. That's what we're confining because they are the producer of these things. And if you don't produce this, 
you can have a significant problem in a lot of advanced technology. This can be a way to recover all the other areas which are in the sea, where we have been discharging in the last 100 and 100 years. Sorry that there's a lot of things that can be done here in producing a new kind of membrane. <coughs> no more tradition. That has to be hydrophobic material and well controlled in the porosity and morphology. So we are looking to totally different graphene, and 2D. There's a lot of source that people never been used for making membrane. Telluride, uh, no, no, bismuth, telluride, etc., unknown to me, and I am a professor of chemistry until uh, recently. And this material can be quite interesting contribution to change the story, not in terms of uh, flux, but uh, in terms, this is bismuth cartogenine, in terms of crystallization. You can see here what we, we want to control is the growth of the crystals. The, and the quality of your crystals. And with this kind of material, compared to traditional membrane in PVDF, you can just have significant uh, change in quality. So a lot of work to be done, not existing today in the literature. So students have to pay a little bit more attention to what is going on and change the approach. Don't make a bad process where you lose 50% of the raw material, brine disposal. Make a process, combine, you cannot change a single step. Make a system where you combine the traditional RO with other membrane operation that can help you to arrive to 95, we are working 93 recovery factor, and that can help also in the final cost of water. Thank you for your attention. Yes, 